And welcome back to Carolina and Company Live. It's a Wednesday and we're getting ready for Hurricane Irene. And we have a special guest with us that knows a lot about the weather. That's right. First alert meteorologist, Darren Stack, thank you for being on the show today. Thanks for having me, guys. I enjoy doing the weather for you guys every day at noon. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's on everyone's mind. Yes. I, Irene has been a, a big pressing issue for many. There was a lot of questions with the forecast track and what's going on. Uh, over the past 40 to 50 years, we were actually just talking about this a little while ago in the newsroom, the technology has advanced so much when it comes to predicting as well as what uh, information we have available to us to be able to put together more accurate forecasts. And we kind of go through the, the scenarios of what we really need initially when we look at uh, hurricanes such as Irene, uh, we look at the amount of moisture available uh, within the system. So if we can go to the maps and the graphics, I can show you that we have uh, the water, water vapor imagery uh, from the forecast, from the maps that show that there's a lot of moisture obviously associated with Irene itself. As you can see, as it approaches towards Bahamas, uh, the, the Bahamas, there's not much dry air out ahead of it. A little bit of dry air off to the west. That's those darker shades. Mm -hmm. And over Florida, there's some dry air as well. That would actually inhibit stronger formation when it comes to uh, hurricanes. When you get dry air getting pulled into the system, that'll actually decrease the amount of water vapor which it needs to keep that fuel going. Um, also, a lot of wind shear, the directional winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere could actually spread it apart or uh, help to strengthen the hurricane in itself. So water is certainly a necessity when it comes to any tropical system. It needs a lot of water to keep uh, strengthening within the system itself. It also needs uh, very, very warm ocean waters. Let's go back to the maps because uh, we're going to go back and look at the water temperatures being in the 80s. That's a necessity because that's going to help fuel also. Uh, the hurricane in itself. It needs to have very warm ocean waters to fuel off of. If it's interacting with land, whether it's a, you know, the high elevations of the Dominican or uh, down around Hispaniola, that actually could disrupt the circulation, the eight to 10,000 foot mountains, along with the friction that's caused by it going over land, such as if it were to pass over Florida. But if it stays over the open waters, it has a lot of potential to continue to, uh, to strengthen. Now, over the past 25 years or so, since 1989, we've had a lot of hurricanes pass off to our coastline or across our area. We mentioned the steering currents that I was just talking about. We have a ridge of high pressure that's in the Atlantic, another ridge that's been baking Texas, and we're also getting a cold front that's going to come into the east. Now, that creates, that cold front creates a weakness in between those two ridges of high pressure, and hurricanes like to find the point of least resistance, and that's why right now it looks like Irene will be passing off the east coast. Now, the question is how close to the coast will it be passing? The big question right now certainly uh, is if it shifts 50 miles west or east, that depends on how much wind and how much rain we'll get. Right now it looks like we're going to generally look for uh, uh, some good scattered showers and thunderstorms out there Friday and Saturday, potentially up to tropical storm force winds down by the beaches. But uh, at least at this point, it looks like the major impacts will be off to our east. With the system passing off to our east, that tends to keep us on the no storm surge side of it. The rain and the wind still there, but not nearly as drastic or as catastrophic potentially depending on how big the system is or whether uh, how strong it is whether it's off to the east now here's a little graphic for you a hurricane passing down to our south such as hugo down towards the charleston area that increases the storm surge of the onshore winds high wind across our area and heavy rainfall still a possibility now what i've seen since i've been here in myrtle beach for the past a little over five and a half years now is more of the off to our east or off to our northern tracks, that means the offshore flow, which means not dealing with the storm surge, but still the potential for some wind and rain. So a lot to take into account when it comes to our coastline across the Carolinas. Right, well, we're thankful that you guys know so much yes. about it and you can you know, keep tracking it and kind of let us know what we need to prepare Absolutely. for. Absolutely, and the best thing to do is to be prepared. We're not gonna overhype the situation. We're gonna let you know what's gonna happen and what we think's gonna happen as uh, the system gets closer. Great, well, thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right, now stay with us. We have some beautiful jewelry. Talking about up. a hobby, you're not gonna believe this one. <laughs> 